people who was born in a very fortunate time when I, you know, my parents' generation and my grandparents' generation fought very hard for uh, a welfare state <clears throat> in my country in which the rights of the individual were underpinned by the collective provision of free health care, free education, decent affordable housing, proper pensions. And that was, you know, that's what we refer to as in my country as the post-war consensus. Parties came and went, Labour, Conservative, Liberal, nobody ever changed that until Margaret Thatcher came along. And she uh, decided that um, it would be better to have, uh, to pay less taxes. So she, uh, she began to uh, take apart the welfare state and that provision, and the government owned the coal mines. And although there was uh, plenty of coal under our country, she began to close them down. So they went on strike. And uh, really, the, the strike became a defence of that welfare state, of those ideals of uh, uh, um, collective responsibility and collective provision. And as a singer-songwriter who'd grown up listening to Bob Dylan and Woody Guthrie and The, and the Clash, it, it seemed to me that my place was to be, you know, there on the picket line playing songs. And it was interesting, because it was a bit of an education for me, because I didn't, like I said, I didn't go to college, so I didn't know a huge amount about socialism. So it was a very steep learning curve. They wanted to know why this pop singer from London had come up to, to the coal fields, sitting up late at night on sofas with people, drinking cups of tea, smoking cigarettes, talking about politics. And uh, so, yeah, I can tell you that my the great inspiration in my politics was Margaret Thatcher. Were it not for her, I probably wouldn't be a socialist.